All right, so the great Tina Turner has passed away. Welcome back to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. The great Tina Turner, the queen of rock and roll, has passed away. I'm glad for a couple of things. I'm glad that she was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame before she passed away. Here are some fun facts about the great Tina Turner. She's listed in a category of the richest celebrities. She's not the richest. She is one of. Her net worth at her time of passing was in the $250 million range. Her date of birth, November 26, 1939 to May 24th of 2023. She died from multiple complications, which we will express or explain later on. Her place of birth is Nutbush. And her gender is female. She was a small person. She was only 5 feet 4 inches tall. But you know what they say about things come, great things come in small packages. Her profession, many people may think she was only a singer. But the great Tina Turner was a singer, actor, author, record producer, dance choreographer, among other things. Her nationality of course, is United States of America. She was an American. Well, that was until she relinquished her American citizenship to take on citizenship in another country. Tina Turner was a American-born Swiss singer and songwriter who had a net worth of $250 million at the time of her death. Tina Turner is one of the best-selling recording artists of all time. During her career, she was she sold over 200 million records worldwide. She was known for her powerful vocals and career longevity. Tina never fell off. She never went cold. She always kept the hits coming generation after generation after generation. She won 12 Grammy Awards including three Grammy Hall of Fame awards and a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. Tina retired from performing in 2009. Known as the Queen of Rock and Roll, Tina Turner was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in October of 2021. And just like I said in the beginning, I'm glad that she lived because that meant a lot to her. So I'm glad that she lived to see it before she passed. Tina Turner lived in Switzerland and she's lived in Switzerland since the mid 1990s. She received her Swiss citizenship in April of 2013. In October of 2013, she renounced her U.S. citizenship. In 2021, Tina sold her music likeness and image rights to bmg rights management for 50 million dollars now the sad thing about that for me is that you have people like future who does music more on the rap scene and not only future but there are other musicians who have sold their catalog and justin bieber and they've been able to sell their catalog for Hundreds of millions of dollars, literally. And the great Tina Turner, who was far more iconic, no disrespect to all the others, far more iconic with way more hits that have lasted and stood the test of time, was only able to sell her image, likeness, and her music catalog for $50 million. Well, Tina was a grown woman. She already had a lot of money. And she wanted to relinquish that. You can't take it with you to the grave. So give me the 50 million. Let me live it, live it up before I exit this lifetime. Unfortunately, Tina Turner died on May 24th of 2023 at the age of 83 years old. Now, a lot of people want to know, why did she relinquish her U.S. citizenship? Well... She moved to Switzerland back in 1995 and she moved into the Zurich suburb of a place called Kusnach. 
that place became her home. They approved her Swiss citizenship. You know, the eight-time Grammy winner, 12-time Grammy winner. She moved from the U.S. She gave an explanation. She said, because a lot of people thought she moved from the U.S. because she was running away from Ike Turner. You know the famous story about Tina and Ike. And a lot of people also thought she moved away because she was such a celebrity, but she wasn't being treated with all the respect and the fanfare she deserved because of racism and whatnot. Well, she explained that she actually left America because, in her words, quote unquote, she said, I left America because my success was in another country and my boyfriend was in another country. My boyfriend moved there to run the company and I always wanted to go to Switzerland and I was very happy. Right. So there you have it. It wasn't about racism and it wasn't about her not being treated as a celebrity. Any of that. It was just the person who she was in love with was in Switzerland and she moved there and she ended up liking it so much. She ended up staying and then she ended up feeling like I don't even want to go back to America. I want to be right here where you are. Right. All right. Now let's talk about Tina Turner. As her career and her life story spans, there are more curious questions out there. What was her ethnicity like? What was she mixed with and all this other stuff? Okay, so Tina Turner, she was actually born Anna Mae Bullock. That was her name given by her parents. She was born November 26th of 1939 and she passed away May 24th of 2023. She was an American born and a naturalized Swiss citizen singer. She was known as the queen of rock and roll and she rose to prominence as the lead singer of the Ike and Tina Turner Review before launching a successful career as a solo performer. Tina Turner began her career with Ike Turner's Rhythm King of Rhythms in 1957 under the name Little Ann. She appeared on her first record called Box Stop in 1958. In 1960, she debuted as Tina Turner with the hit duet single A Fool in Love. The duo was Ike and Tina Turner and they became one of the most formidable live acts in history. They released hits such as It's Gonna Work Out Fine, River Deep, Mountain High, Proud Mary, Nutbush City Limits, before disbanding going their separate ways in 1976. In the 1980s, Tina Turner launched one of the greatest comebacks in music history. Her 1984 multi-platinum album, Private Dancer, contained the hits, What's Love Got to Do With It, which won the Grammy Award for Record of the Year and became her first and only number one song on the Billboard Hot 100. At that time, she was 44 years old. She was the oldest female solo artist to top the Hot 100. Her chart success continued, though, with Better Be Good To Me, Private Dancer, We Don't Need Another Hero, Thunderdome, Typical Male, The Best, I Don't Want to Fight, and Golden Eye. Now, during her Break Every Rule World Tour in 1988, she then set a Guinness Book of World Record record for the largest paying audience. 180,000 people showed up to see this one performer perform. I want you to let this sink in. She didn't have any headline acts. She didn't have any opening acts. It was Tina Turner from start to finish. 180,000 people paid and packed that stadium arena for one person, Tina Turner. Tina Turner also acted in a film called Tommy which came out in 1975, and she was in Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, which came out in 1985. In 1993, What's Love Got to Do With It, a biological, a biographical film that adapted from her autobiography, I, Tina, My Life Story, was released. 
In 2009, Tina Turner retired from completing her Tina 50th anniversary tour, which is the 15th highest grossing tour of the 2000. In 2018, she became the subject of the jukebox musical Tina. Now, having sold over 100 million records worldwide, Tina Turner is one of the best-selling recording artists of all time. She received 12 Grammy Awards, which include 8 competitive awards, 3 Grammy Hall of Fame awards, and a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, like we said before. She was the first black artist and first woman to be on the cover of Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone ranked her among the 100 greatest artists of all all time and the 100 greatest singers of all time tina turner had a star on the hollywood walk of fame and the saint louis walk of fame she was twice inducted into the rock and roll hall of fame with the ike turner in 1991 and also as a solo artist in 2021 she was also a 2005 recipient of the Kennedy Center Honors and Woman of the Year Awards. Tina Turner died again May 24th of 2023. Her story is extensive. She was born Anna Mae Bullock in a place called Brownville, Tennessee, a country girl, the youngest daughter of Floyd Richard Bullock and his wife Zelma Priscilla. She, the family, lived in the nearby rural areas where her father worked as an overseer of the sharecroppers at a farm on Highway 180. She later recalls picking cotton with her family at an early age. When she participated in a PBS series, African American Lives 2, with Henry Louis Gates Jr., he shared her genealogical DNA tests, estimates, and traced her family timeline. Previously, she believed she had a significant amount of Native American ancestry. Bullock had two older sisters, Evelyn Juanita Curry and Ruby Allen Bullock, a songwriter. She was also the first cousin once removed of blues man Eugene Bridges. As young children, the three sisters were separated when their parents relocated to Knoxville, Tennessee to work at a defense facility during World War II. Bullock went to stay with her strict religious paternal grandparents, Alex and Roxana Bullock, who were deacons and deaconess at the Woodlawn Missionary Baptist Church. Now, after the war, the sisters reunited with their parents and moved with them to Knoxville. Two years later, the family returned to Nutbush to live in the Flag Grove community where Bullock attended Flag Grove Elementary School first through eighth grade. As a young girl, she sang in a church choir at Nutbush Spring Hill Baptist Church. She was 11. Her mother, Zelma, ran off without warning, seeking freedom from her abusive relationship with Floyd by relocating to St. Louis in 1950. Two years after her mother left the family, her father married another woman and moved to Detroit in 1952. She and her sisters were sent to live with their maternal grandmother, Georgiana Curry, in Brownsville, Tennessee. She stated in her own autobiography, I, Tina, that her parents had not loved her and she wasn't wanted. Zelma had planned to leave Floyd, but stayed once she became pregnant. She was a very young woman who didn't want another kid, Tina Turner recalled in her autobiography. As a teenager, she worked as a domestic worker for the Henderson's family. Um, she was the Henderson house when she was notified that her half-sister Evelyn had died in a car crash alongside her cousin, Margaret, and v Vella Evans. A self-professed tomboy, she joined both the cheerleading squad and the female basketball team at Carver High School in Brownsville and socialized every chance she got. 
when she was 16, her grandmother died, so she moved and went to live with her mother in St. Louis. She graduated from Summer High School in 1958. After her graduation, she worked as a nurse's aide at Barnes Jewish Hospital. Then comes the chapter in her life that's very interesting to a lot of people. She and her sisters began a frequent to frequent nightclubs in St. Louis and St. East St. Louis. So she first saw Ike Turner perform with his band, Kings of Rhythm, at the Manhattan Club in East St. Louis. So she was impressed by his talent. That's what she said, recalling that she almost went into a trance watching him play. He was that good. She asked him to let her sing in his band, despite the fact that few women had ever sung with him. Tina Turner said that he had called her, but he never did. So he basically told her, I'll, I'll give you a call, but he never did. So one night in 1957, she got hold of the microphone from Kings of Rhythm's drummer, Eugene Washington, during an intermission, and she sang the R&B King Blues ballad, You Know I Love You. Upon hearing her sing, Ike Turner was like, what? Who is that? So Ike Turner asked her if she knew more songs. She sang the rest of the night, and she became a featured vocalist with his band after that. During this period, she taught her, he taught her the finer points of vocal control and performance. Bullock's first recording was in 1958 under the name Little Anne on single box top. She is credited as a vocalist on the record alongside Ike and fellow King of Rhythm singer Carson Oliver. In 1960, Tina Turner wrote A Fool in Love. Right, uh, Ike Turner wrote A Fool in Love for singer Art La Sister. Bullock, at the time, that was Tina Turner's name. She was to sing background with the person who he wrote that for. But the person failed to show up for the recording session at Technosonic Studios. Since Tina had already paid for the studio time, Turner, rather, had already paid for the studio time, he suggested that let Tina sing it. She went in there. She did her thing. The rest was history. President and R&B of R&B label Sue Records, upon hearing the song, was impressed with Tina Turner's vocals, later stating that Tina sounded like screaming dirt. It was a funky sound. Mari brought the track and paid Ike Turner $25,000 cash in advance for the recording and publishing rights of that song. Murray also convinced Ike Turner to make Tina the star of the show. Ike responded by renaming her Tina because it rhymed with Sheena. However, family and friends still called her Anne, and she was inspired by Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, and Nyoka, the Jungle Girl, to create her stage persona. Ike Turner added his last name to her name and trademarked the name as a form of protection so that if she left him like his previous singers had, that he would replace her with another Tina Turner. I guess that's why in the movie, you, Ike and Tina, you can hear her say she doesn't want anything when she was leaving. She was like, just let me leave with my name, Ike. That's all I want is my name because he actually had a trademark to that name. So if she left, that is not her real name. Anna Mae is her real name. So if she left, Ike Turner could have been vindictive and said, hmm, guess what? You can't use that name. It's trademarked and I'll sue you every time you use it. And he could have easily found another pretty face, long legs, good singing girl and called her Tina Turner and kept it going. But Tina wanted the name because she was invested in the name already. And when they broke up, she left everything behind. You could keep the money. You can keep everything. You can just let me leave with my name. And she did. She left with her name. And then she went on to make a whole lot of other hit songs. And uh, just an illustrious career. 
building a true legendary career. So her solo career was from 1976 to 1983. In 1976 and 1977, she earned income by appearing on TV shows such as The Hollywood Squares, Donnie and Mary, The Sonny and Cher Show, The Brady Bunch Hour. After her separation from Ike, lawsuits were mounting up for canceled Ike and Tina gigs because they weren't together anymore. Tina resumed touring to pay off her debt. Oh, before you wonder uh, why, why they broke up, because Ike Turner was on drugs and he had become very abusive. And I remember her writing one place where she said when she finally couldn't take it anymore, she told him, look, I want to leave. I don't want this relationship anymore. And he used a shoe stretcher, a wooden shoe stretcher and hit her in the head with it. And that was the first time she thought, oh my God, like I got to get up out of here. So long story short, Ike and Tina broke up. Ike got more heavily into drugs and got more abusive and got more controlling. And, put, you know, she was just working, 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 working. Sing it again. Sing it again. She's like, Ike, it's done. That, that, that version is good. You don't talk to me. Sing it again. Kind of thing. So she had to get away from that. Right. Her career resurgence to superstardom was between 1983 and 2000s. And that's when more hits came. Capitol Records came. She signed with Capitol Records in 1983 and she delivered. And then she had big hits, big top tens um, singles. She worked with people like David Bowie, Iggy Pop, a bunch of other people who are also legendary. She received a bunch of other awards around this time as well. And between 2000 and 2023, in November of 2004, she released All the Best, which debuted at number two on the Billboard 200 charts in 2005, her highest charting album in the United States of America. Remember, she wasn't even in the U.S. anymore. She was now in Switzerland, and she had relinquished her U.S. citizenship to go live in Switzerland, right? She made a public comeback in February of 2008 at the Grammys. Um, where she performed alongside Beyonce. Y'all can go look that up. In 2008 at the Grammys, she made public comeback. She performed alongside Beyonce. In addition to that, she won a Grammy as a featured artist on River, the Joni Letters. In October of 2008, she embarked on her first tour in nearly 10 years with the Tina 50th Anniversary Tour. Um, and then she also released the greatest compilation, she had the tour was a huge success and became one of the best selling tours of all time. I remember people saying, damn, Tina Turner looks good. She has the legs of a 19, 20 year old and her body looks good in everything. And shortly after, she realized that she was ill and she had a series of illnesses that took her out. There are other stories out there about her religion and how many children she had and uh, how she relinquished her citizenship from the U.S. to become a Swiss Switzerland citizen. She revealed in her 2018 memoir, My Love Story, that she had suffered multiple life-threatening illnesses. In 2013, three weeks after her wedding to Erwin Bach, she suffered a stroke. They had been together for a long time, and they decided... Time to tie the knot. So in 2018, three weeks after, she suffered a stroke. And her stroke was pretty severe because she had to actually learn to walk again. In 2016, she was diagnosed with intestinal cancer. Tina Turner opted for what's called homeopathic remedies for her high blood pressure. This untreated high blood pressure resulted in damage to her kidneys and eventual renal failure. Her chances of receiving a kidney were pretty low, and she was urged to start dialysis if you want to survive, but she was so much into natural medicine, she considered assisted suicide instead, and she signed up with what's called Exit. Exit is a company that helps people to basically humanely commit suicide, end their suffering. But Botch, the man who she married, he offered to donate his kidney to her through a transplant, and they were a match. 
and Tina had her kidney transplant surgery in April 7th of 2017. And on May 24th of 2023, Tina Turner died at her home in Kusnach, Switzerland at the age of 83 following a long illness including cancer, strokes, and kidney failure in her final years. With that said, we'll leave this one right here. May her soul rest in peace. She came, she saw, she definitely conquered, and she definitely will live on forever. Rest in peace, the queen of rock and roll. I'm out. Peace.